Hello once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and today we are kind of doing a follow-up from our shelf talks over the last few weeks, and we're going to do some openings of some things that were kind of on display or kind of hidden in the background of some items that I feel like um, are good uh, good fodder for unboxing and uh, placing in the collection uh, in a loose kind of setting. So we have three items here and going by, let's look, why don't we go by year, okay? Which means that we've got, well, I believe this one, ah, funny that I picked kind of all the same year almost. We have from 2009, we have the Gela Grub Patrol, okay? Uh, which is a uh, clone trooper on top of a creature. We've got um, the Turbo Tank Support Squad, also from 2009. And we've got the Pirate Speeder Bike with Cad Bane. So really, really cool set of uh, different things. This one obviously is meant to be placed on a turbo tank. So um, we will be doing a follow-up episode of the Clone Wars vehicles very soon. And we'll make sure to uh, get um, these guys placed on that uh, tur clone turbo tank. So why don't we kind of go backwards here. I'm going to start with... Cad Bane. Now, Cad Bane, for those uninitiated, was a character from the Clone Wars cartoon series, and he was a bounty hunter, and very much kind of a unique kind of character, um, very shady, definitely more of a villain. Um, I just think it was something akin to Boba Fett, um, a little bit more, I guess you could say there was a there was kind of a lovable-ness to him. Um, but not lovable like in the same way as say Hondo Anaka. Hondo Anaka was uh, another pirate that um, was you know sometimes a bad guy, sometimes a good guy. You know, just always somebody you, you kind of loved to to hate, <laughs> so to speak. But um, on, in contrast, uh, Cad Bane was definitely more villain fodder. He was definitely. He had a, a sense of just being evil. You, know, you didn't want to mess with him. But he was a really cool character. And I remember there was a, a long stretch of time where um, people, the kids, liked to dress up. He was a really popular Halloween costume. So I'll show you the picture figure in a second. I'll get some close-up shots in a minute. Sorry for the noise. Come on. Yeah, this is like really, really stuck in there. Hang on one second. This is why a cutting board and a box cutter of some sort, always a great tool to have when you're unboxing. Man, this is just crazy. <laughs> All right, there we go. But you also, this, the speeder was very unique, very unique to this um, particular toy and did not ever really come out again. I, I think that's kind of one of my one of my interesting um, loves for the Clone Wars time period. Um, I guess this could also tie into one of the Clone Wars, um, to our Clone Wars kind of retrospective of the vehicles. The thing that I really enjoyed about this was that they made a lot of characters, and these are three examples of characters and or vehicles or weapons, weaponry, that they made one time. And then they never made them again. They just, you know, they, they made the sculpts, they made the, the molds, they made everything that they needed, and then they produced them. They lasted a year or so, maybe a little less, and then you never really saw them again because they were only featured usually in one episode, maybe maybe more than one. Um, this is kind of an old school coming with a, ooh, comes with a nice little catalog, but it looks like it might be a poster. I don't know, let's look. Oh no, just a, just a two-sided, Excuse me. <coughs> Two-sided little imagery. Looks like a, kind of an action figure shot. I'll get a close-up of, of it. Um, one is featuring an, an Empire Strikes Back scene, and the other features a, uh, um, a Clone Wars scene. So that's kind of cool. A little different. All right. So Cad Bane. Now, to take to take a look at him, he definitely has a Western. You know, they've always said that Star Wars was influenced a lot by the Old West. Well, they um, were pretty much on point with that when they did this. Um, so another nice thing about this is it comes with a built like a little stand. And uh, I gotta say, one area where Hasbro kind of hits her mitts is the 
they, you know, all the figures pretty much have holes in their, the bottoms of their shoes. And those holes correspond with sometimes play sets or sometimes stands where they can actually put the figure on a stand and make the figure easy to pose. You can do all sorts of, you know, different things, whatever you want, okay? And it works pretty well. Well, and this one is a real strong hit. Like, look, if you can do this, okay, if you can actually hang the figure upside down from it, this stand does really well. It says Star Wars on it. Um, they've had all different types of stands, and you could also buy third-party companies' stands, but they never all seem to work for everybody. So this happens to work well for Cad Bane. Um, unfortunately, I don't want him on the stand. I want him on the speeder bike. So, or the speeder. I shouldn't say speeder bike. It's funny, like they, they talk about speeders and they they mention it, you know, like there have been different things. The original we all know from Empire, from Return of the Jedi, excuse me, was the speeder bike. That was the original. And that was what, that came out with the biker scouts and it was they were on Endor and it was really cool. And then since then, in, in either book form or video game form or other kind of forms, they um, came up with other things like swoop bikes or speeders or that kind of thing so here we have like what's nice about this is that he has um he has two pistols again like kind of like two sidearms that it can like that but um you know has as hasbro's kind of way of doing things they top they will rubber band the the weapons to the hands so which is in this case is actually pretty cool like i can just set up a pose where he's like turning the other way like still riding but like kind of turning back and trying to fire back and forth like that so that's a pretty cool thing i think i'll leave that kind of like that you know so he's like he doesn't even care where he's going and this thing is bolted pretty tightly to it so really excellent job and it comes again with a game there was a game that kind of came with this involving dice and uh like, like a, a stats card um, I usually just collect all these and kind of pl place them in a bin. Um, I don't really know which ones are which, but uh, again, this is just, I don't believe that the value of these figures is such that uh, is going to go up so much that that kind of stuff's going to matter that much. I could be wrong, but you know, it's okay. Next up, we got our support squad turbo tanks. Okay, two clones, two tanks, kind of kind of set up in a very symmetrical way. That's cool. Um, and speaking of Clone Wars, you know, this is a kind of, I guess this is an unboxing and it's also a uh, kind of a, a follow-up on my Clone Wars perspective uh, or retrospective. I will say that I'm going to only do one more episode on the uh, Clone Wars, not because I've got shown every vehicle. I've shown most of the vehicles, but there are still a handful that I haven't gotten to. I'm going to bring out the big guns. I'm going to bring out the Clone Turbo Tank and the other uh, the other tank or, or you know, the MT a or MTT vehicle, I have to look it up. Um, I'll show those two, and if there's any, a couple other smaller ones, I'll do that. So um, that's important to be aware of because there's just so much going on here. Um, and I got other ideas. We're getting into the, we're getting, once we hit May, we're into that tw the literal 20th anniversary of Phantom Menace, and I want to do some stuff with that as well. All right, this comes again with a nice little catalog. Um, you can see it's got some just figures, some starfighters. Some action figures, pretty cool stuff. All right, so need to have that. The uh, backdrops on these were pretty cool too. I believe that this particular scene, I think it's Felucia, I think. It's where uh, the clones, if the, you know, spoiler alert, it's where the clones uh, kind of turned on uh, Ala Sakula and when they did their Order 66, that flowery kind of planet. But they did revisit that in um, the Clone Wars TV show. For those who don't know, obviously the Clone Wars TV show does take place prior to the ep events of Episode 3, which means they take place prior to um, Order 66. And the thing is that when you watch it, you know, as a kid, it's funny, you know, because uh, my fam my wife and I, we, we were both teachers, and I teach older students, and she teaches younger students, so for a long time, the students that she was teaching were totally hooked on this show and they talk about it and because you know she's married to me she got a lot of through marriage <laughs> she had a lot of information that she could share with them about this about stuff and you know they they love the show they love the show but their heroes 
their heroes were Anakin Skywalker. You know, yes, their heroes were also Obi-Wan Kenobi and R2, but their heroes were Anakin Skywalker, Captain Rex, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Captain Cody, and I was thinking to myself, like, at the time, I was kind of thinking to myself, my goodness, this is a this is a dangerous thing. I mean, these kids are they're worshiping these guys like like heroes, you know, like and and I don't know what's gonna happen with Rex at that time. I didn't know what was gonna happen with Rex, but I did know that when it came to Cody, I mean, the minute the minute that Emperor Palpatine, spoiler alert again, the minute Emperor Palpatine said execute Order sixty six, what did Cody do? He just looked up. And he told his he told his clone troopers to fire on Obi Wan. This is a, he was just joking and joshing with them a second ago, and then boom, just go. And it was so gut wrenching to watch. I just I, I was I couldn't even believe it. So to uh, to see you know several episodes like you know like generally speaking like five years of episodes where these clones were considered the hero. I just accidentally launched my missile there. I always do that. Um, to see that over and over and over again, it, you know, week after week, I was thinking, oh my God, these guys are going to turn. They're all going to turn on the Jedi. And yet they're all laughing and joking around and they're like being like everything's great. And I just thought that was a scary thing. So, and, and, and for kids, you know, how are they going to react to it? But, you know, I think I give, I didn't give kids enough credit. They handled it fine. By the time they were old enough to, um, you know, to truly understand it, they were mature enough to handle it. So, and some of them did see, you know, they did see uh, episode three before this. It's just that, you know, after a few years of it being on, the kids were too young to have seen episode three. So, their their introduction to Star Wars was Clone Wars. So, you got to be careful there. So, but I liked it. I thought it was cool. And these guys are pretty cool. They, they pretty much just. This one's having a little hard time h hanging on to the to the actual uh, gun. Excuse me. Now, one little complaint I have, and it's not a big thing. It's not a big deal. It's not really a. It's not worthy of an actual complaint, but I'm just going to say it anyway, just because everybody can improve on something. Well, aside from the fact that this guy's not not really holding on to his guns very well. <laughs> the other thing I want to say is these guys both come with two other weapons. They come with like large scale rifles and smaller ones. And as much as I like that, and I think that's great, I kind of feel like that's just weapons that are designed to get lost. Because, let's face it, these guys already have the biggest gun in the collection. So all I would have asked is that, and, in, and I will say that some of the newer, and this is 10 years ago, some of the newer, um, some of the newer Star Wars collection figures do this. They put in the, the ability to lay one of the guns on the side of the leg and like snap it in as if it's like holstered. Or you know maybe there was a way to put it on the side of the of the gun itself, just so you wouldn't lose it, or you get an option or an ability to try not to lose it. But they didn't do that here, so sorry to say that. That's my only complaint. Otherwise, I mean, as obviously we've talked about this, the the figures definitely have a, um, a more streamlined look, and maybe that's part of the reason for the because of the way the Clone Wars was designed. They were trying to match the the look of the show, which had a definite certain stylized look not the same as in, in uh, live action so that's okay now we have what else do we have here oh we have another catalog ah i miss the days of catalogs these are some great ones just really cool um really cool looks to it is it there's even a spot the difference they show like two images of the same um, picture and they said you know pick out the differences so it's almost like a mini activity book and a little checklist nice stuff I miss those days all right so we have the Galag Galagrub Galagrub which ooh, it's kind of slimy feeling okay cool um, one again a figure that you didn't really see the creature I should say was not in the movies um, it was in the Clone Wars TV show and although the style of the action figure looks more like it is live action and not. So maybe it was in the movie, but in the but kind of off to the side or something. Like a mini rig. You all remember those? I miss mini rigs. <laughs> anyway, so 
some good old old good old fashioned uh, old school way of uh, aligning the figures. So I have to kind of cut all the tape. Oh yeah, yeah. This thing is kind of creepy. God. Again, I gotta. There we go. Look at this thing. It is definitely something that belongs in Star Wars and not in real life. If you saw this thing crawling in your bathroom, you would freak the heck out. But in Star Wars, it's perfectly normal. In fact, they ride it like a piece of burden. And interesting, this one does release a figure that does come with the helmet removable. So that's kind of interesting. Dude, what's the matter with you? There we go. Well, <laughs> it's a clone trooper. They all look the same. All right, so let me just... Oops, sorry if my mic was uh, cutting in and out there. All right. So, yeah, this looks like you doesn't even really have a saddle. It just has a just has a little area for it to sit on. and kind of, I guess it's designed... Oh, my God. It's very weird. It's so strange. Look at that. I gotta get some close-up shots with it. It, I mean, wow, it's just bizarre, just bizarre. But um, I don't remember it. I gotta look at. I'm gonna have to look in more detail at Revenge of the Sith. I do believe it is a Clone Wars. I'm sorry, a Revenge of the Sith um, version, not a Clone Wars version. I could be wrong, but the reason I'm saying that is because the style of the figure looks more like it is. Um, live action and not uh, animated. But they could have just done a change with that. I just don't remember seeing this one. This is a very rare one. In terms of seeing it, I don't know how rare the toy is, but in terms of seeing it in the movies, it was it was rare. And, and it might have been a little more present in the cartoons, but it's just basically a giant slug or a giant millipede almost. It's very strange. But um, I, I kind of like it loose. I think I think it'll you know find a better place in, somewhere in the display loose. So there we go. We got our Cad Bane figure. All right, right here. We got our two clone troopers um, and their and their turbo tank accessories. And we have the Galagrub with clone commander. So that'll do it for this week's episode of Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing Show. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, hit the little bell icon so you know when new episodes are coming. I generally drop every um, I drop every Sunday and Wednesday. I hope to do that again soon. I, I will say this, that we do have an upcoming trip to Walt Disney World coming up, and therefore there should be a, one of our one of the drop videos in the next week or so should be kind of a, a launch bay update and uh, Tatooine Traders update so we can see what, what they have available there. And, uh, you know, may, maybe get a peek at the uh, Galaxy's Edge construction, although in, uh, in Hollywood Studios in Florida, it is not easy to see. Um, and they're not opening yet. They're getting close. Over August 29th, we got about four months, uh, and, and less than a, and about a month and a half until it opens in Disneyland. And there has been a ton of stuff that have come out that came out last week about new merchandise. Um, I do want to take a moment to just mention that the merchandise that's coming out is incredible. It's if 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 they only come out with a quarter of it, or if a quarter of it is only if if only a quarter of it is really worthy of what um, they're touting it's it's still incredible and I, I can't even I can't stress that enough um, they have everything from like a droid building area not little droid building like they have now but like large-scale droid droid building that will interact and just they, they've scaled they've, they've gotten that technology down to where they can just help you to customize it they have a customizable lightsaber thing with with hilts without with the blades without the blades uh kyber crystals that fit inside holocrons that also fit inside the lightsabers creatures um all these like toys that look like in universe toys i mean it's just incredible and on top of that i've heard rumor right now it's just rumor that they aren't going to close the launch bay or star tours or any of the stuff outside of galaxy's edge at least not right away because the, when you go to galaxy's edge you're in star wars you're not just going to a place that celebrates it you're in it 
But if you want to go to a place that celebrates it, well, you got to kind of be outside of there and enjoy places like Launch Bay and that kind of stuff. I'm sure some of that will go away, but I think they're going to keep a lot of it around because that's a great way to, especially with things like The Mandalorian coming out and the Diego Luna and now Alan Tudyk, Cassian and K2 series coming out. There are going to be a lot of things, all things Star Wars, to um, get excited about. So I'm really excited. I talked to my wife about it and we were saying you know it's just going to be literally impossible to purchase everything on the on a trip you know purchase everything on the first trip um we would maybe do you know multiple you know we will make multiple trips and we'll make you know certain purchases and then we'll do certain you know unboxings so you're probably going to have a better time finding stuff on other channels but i will get to a lot of the stuff that's there I, it, this is right up my alley. It's very niche, very unusual. You can only get it there. So I'm real excited to hopefully be able to purchase some stuff there. So um, also I want to say that I was loving Star Wars Celebration. I did not go. I watched it vicariously through the uh, Star Wars live show. I got to say kudos to to the creators, uh, the producer Scott Bromley and uh, Andy Gutierrez and Anthony Carboni, the, the main hosts and all the other hosts. Um, it was so incredible. It literally didn't stop for f six to eight hours every day, Friday through Monday. They either showed panels or they showed the Star Wars show stage where they were doing live interviews and showing different things on the floor. It was incredible. And for people that don't go or who can't afford to go right at the moment, um, it's a far cheaper thing to just simply watch this and for free. And then if there's things that you really want, you can go on to eBay and purchase them. Yes, you do make purchases that unfortunately uh, people are kind of gouging the prices, but when you look at the big picture, you're not spending money on flight, hotel, badges, um, and anything else that you bought there. So, you know, even if even spending a couple of, even a couple of hundred dollars on some of these things is pretty cool so uh, I've ordered a few things I've won a few eBay auctions I'm happy to say and I will do an unboxing of all the Star Wars celebration related things um, probably in the next week to two weeks okay and as I said we have an we have an upcoming uh, episode one uh, look back with some of their merchandise which I'm gonna gather like the best of and we have so many other things I can't even tell you um, th some more sideshow coming in the mail some more gentle giant coming in the mail so that stuff can take a long time though so be patient on that thank you so much for watching until next time may the force be with you